Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today we're looking at the top five home coffee grinders. First things first, the price point. These are top end home coffee grinders and the price will depend on the market. So in Australia, they vary in price from about 1,000 to 1,600 Australian dollars. And in the US, they tend to range between 750 and 1,100 US dollars. Now, that's a lot of money for a home grinder. So why do you need a home grinder? When it comes to home grinding, the better the grinder, the better the result. It is quite simple in that respect. Presuming if you're looking at this video, you either already have a home espresso machine or you're planning on buying an espresso machine and grinder. And if you're buying an espresso machine and you're not buying a grinder, you're using pre-ground coffee. And pre-ground coffee oxidizes really fast. So by the time you get it home, not only is it oxidized, but you haven't dialed it into your machine. Having a grinder like this at home lets you buy beans from your local coffee roaster, which lasts a lot longer. Hopefully store them in the pouch coffee bags that they come with or coffee container like an Airscape and then grind freshly on demand. As you adjust the grinder, the finer you grind, the slower your extraction and the coarser, the faster. So there is a bit of a correlation between adjusting the grind, in this case with grind on demand, adjusting the time and getting that perfect espresso. Simply put, if you're going to do espresso at home and you're serious about it, you need a grinder. Now, let's look at them individually and see the pros and cons and which one's best for you. The first grinder we're going to look at, in no particular order, is the Mazza Mini Electronic Type A. Now, this grinder is the OG of high-end home grinders. It's been around for many years and it has evolved and changed over the years. The early ones, firstly, didn't have grind on the man and then they came out and there used to be an adjustment down here and then they had the first iteration of the touchpad. And this is in its current version. Now, I love the fact that this grinder is solid. It's really the baby brother of their commercial range. Think of the Roba, Kony, Major, Super Jolly. So when you see this grinder, it feels like you have a cafe at home. It's the same look and same build. It really is solid, heavy, just feels real. In saying that, probably a couple of little things that are also annoying about it. The grind adjustment, as much as it's stepless, so infinite grind adjustment, it's kind of now an older style in which it's a thread on the collar. And as you get like over time a bit of coffee in there, it does get a bit stiff and a bit hard to do. And when you do take them out to clean, when you put it back in, you do lose your grind adjustment and you have to redial it in. And the menu, the menu is a little bit more work in that you have to hold it down, let it flash, hit single or double, dial in the time, hit the menu, let it flash again. But with those negatives aside, not only is it solid build, the 64mm blades are made by Mazda. They're a really good quality blade and the aftermarket world has developed a whole range of blades like SSP with their titanium and uniformity blades. When it comes to the porter filter support, the support holds the porter filter without you having to hold it. Not only does it support the porter filter, you can put a dosing cup in and it holds really well. And then when it comes to sound and speed, this does 20 grams in about 11 seconds and it comes out at a high 80 in the decibels, around the 88, 89. We're just gonna grind out now 20 grams. We've got it dialed in just to see the fluffiness of the grind, how quick it is and how loud it is. So just tearing the porter filter at zero. We've got this grinder already dialed in. We're gonna run 11 seconds and hopefully get 20 grams out. So it ran at about 88 to 90 decibels, which is common for this grinder. And let's just weigh that out and see. And spot on 20 grams. 
It does vary though. This was lucky to a spot on 20. Sometimes it can vary by 0.2 of a gram. So I think 19.8, 20.2 kind of range. But all in all, super solid and the OG of high-end home grinders. Now let's look at the next grinder in the run. The San Remo All Ground. Now, this machine was a collaboration with Fiorenzato. So you can find the All Ground as either San Remo or Fiorenzato. The machine itself is pretty cool. Where I think they've nailed this machine is in the adjustments. You've got 30 notches of espresso and it's really easy to move. And this not only is an espresso grinder, but you can do mocker and filter by easily moving that collar around. Just remember if you do that to purge 11 grams of coffee out to make sure you are now at the new grind setting. As you move between espresso and filter, the display changes. So in the espresso menu, you've got single and double time pre-programmed or a grind on demand. And to change that, you just hold down the single, go in, go up and down the time you want and hit okay. So super easy to dial in. Another cool feature about this is not only does it hold the porter filter well, but it holds a dosing cup in really neatly. And dosing cups have become a lot more popular. The hopper is smaller, and so this grind actually sits lower than the Mazda. The Mazda was 47 and a half centimeters. This is 43 centimeters. So if you've got low high cupboards, it does help the lower they get. When it comes to cleaning, this is the easiest one here to clean. Just remove the hopper, Bring it all the way to the coarser setting where you get red to red lining up. Press a little button and the top comes out. So you can get in and clean the blades or replace the blades, one without any tools and two without losing your grind adjustment. In saying that, this is running titanium blades. So it's the only one in the range running titanium blades, but it is in the higher end of the price point. So this grinder runs 20 grams in 12 seconds. So just one second slower than the Mazza. We'll get out the phone again and we'll grind out 20 grams. Let's go. Like the Mazza, it was in the high 80s, most of the time being around the 86 decibels. And let's see. And that was 20.1 grams. So just 0.1 of a gram over. Like the Mazda, there probably is a variance of about 0.2 of a gram. So this grinder, all in all, the highest in price. It does have the titanium blades, easiest to adjust and clean. But let's see how the rest of the range stacks up. The Rocket Faustino V3.1. Now this grinder was just released now and it's an updated version of the previous Rocket Faustino. It's a very short grinder, just 43 centimeters tall, runs 50 mil blades. Now with these blades, they're a unique design. So currently there is an aftermarket blades for them available yet, but that's not necessarily a downside. When it comes to dialing in the grinder, you got your knob here on the rear that just turns left and right, and you got three different time settings. To get into them, you just hold the R button, let it flash, hit single, double, or triple. In this case, double, go up or down with the time, hit the R button, and it's set again. And it's got continuous grinding or grind on demand if you want to just top it up. When it comes to the porter filter support, they've actually updated the porter filter support. In the past, you could only use the rocket porter filters that had the double spout in reverse. Now they've added an extra little pin here at the top, so you can use any porter filter. You can just put it in and lock it in. On this one though, it is a little bit harder to use the dosing cup. It doesn't really fit in very well. And now let's just check how loud this grinder is. So 
It mostly read around the low 80s, 81, 82 decibels. When it comes to cleaning, the new V3 has updated itself from the previous version. And now you no longer have to take the whole top plate out. You can actually just get, remove the hopper and then you, there's another three screws holding the edge of the blade in. You can then remove the blade and clean it out. And as the, it's the bottom blade that moves up and down, you can clean it out without losing your grind adjustment once you put everything back together. To see the full review on this grinder, including seeing how it all opens up and you can clean it, click here as we have done a video covering this. The price point on this grinder in Australia is around 1100 Australian dollars and over in America around about the 700 USD. Now let's check out the next grinder. The Malconic X54. Now this is the baby brother of the Malconic range. Malconic's well known for the EK43 which pretty much is in every specialty cafe. Now, what I like about this grinder is how fluffy the grinds are. You'll see in a sec once I grind, it really is consistent in its particle size and uniformity. So in terms of grind, it really is up there. There are though a couple of annoying little things like adjusting the time is a little bit fiddly on this grinder. So something like the Eureka is a bit quicker to dial that in. So when it comes to dialing in espresso, you've got your dial here on the side and it has 60 notches, so very fine dial adjustments. And when it comes to grinding, the portafilter support really does hold the portafilter in well. And there's a micro switch just behind there. So you can either run it manually by pressing the button here or through the micro switch. And it is a bit quieter than some of the other grinders. Let's just grind out 20 grams which in this case takes 17 seconds, so it is a little bit slower than the other grinders, and see what it looks like. Let's just grind 17 seconds, should be 20 grams. So as you can see, it was high 70s, low 80s in decibel, and the grind is very fluffy, which is really nice for distribution. And there we got spot on 20 grams. It is a little bit slower at 17 seconds than some of the others, but the grinds really are the most even, nicest distribution so far. One thing to note is the portafilter support comes out really easily and you can replace it with a support that can hold a dosing cup. So if you were to use the dosing cup or grind filter coffee, you can just it comes with a different support which you can just put in there and run it to a cup. Now, let's look at the Eureka XL. Now, this is the top end of the Eureka Minion range for the grind on demand. I love this grinder in the sense that it's got a small footprint. It really does fit most home kitchens and it's solidly built. When it comes to blades, it's running 65 mil blades, which are on the bigger size of the blades we're looking at. But the most or the nicest feature is just how easy the interface is. You can just hit single, double, go up and down in the time. You can hold the plus and minus just to lock it in so no one can change it. You can bring that back. You can grind on demand by just holding the two bottom ones. It just really is a simple, simple grinder to dial the time in. And you have to, as you adjust the grinder, you do have to dial the time. So being able to collaborate between the two makes it awesome. The only annoying thing is the dial. The dial is a little bit small, so it can be a bit finicky to do those small little movements compared to like the bigger dials of just say the all ground that we looked at earlier. One thing Eureka is known for is just how quiet they are compared to the other grinders. They got the Silencio technology and it really does make a difference. So we've got this dialed in for eight seconds for 20 grams and it is one of the quieter grinders to see how it performs.
So it was running around the 83 decibels and let's just pull that out and see. And it was just a touch under at 19.7, but I did drop some coffee there. And although that's all five grinders, let's just have a look at one extra grinder, a bonus grinder. Now, technically not a grind on demand, but a new segment that's becoming super popular, which is single dose grinders. Our bonus machine is slightly different. It's actually a single dose machine. So the other five machines were grind on demand. Effectively, you've got your coffee in the hopper, you've dialed in your, your grind adjustment, you've dialed in your time, you put it in your porta fills and you grind away. Now the only issue with that is all grinders have a small amount of retention. And that retention is basically pre-ground coffee that ends up in the next coffee you do. Ways around that is you can just set up a small timer to purge it but the other option is you run a single dose grinders. Niche Zero really made single dose at home popular and a whole bunch of grinders in this case the Eureka single dose and other grinders like the Option O etc have really brought it in to the masses. So the difference is you're effectively putting in just the coffee you want to grind so you're pre-weighing your coffee closing that off starting that motor up running your coffee and grinding out just what you're gonna be basically extracting. And because you got the bellow here to push out any coffee left over in there, you have no retention. So now that it's clean, we're just gonna weigh in 20 grams. So we've actually pre-raised it earlier. And we've got spot on 20 grams. What we're gonna do is pour the 20 grams in, have the dosing cup there ready to go, turn on the motor, let it grind. And then push through any coffee. Turn it off and just checking it. We've just got spot on 20 grams and there should be no grinds left in there. So zero retention. And that's the bonus grinder. Now we're gonna do a different video looking at further into these grinders and also comparing the single dose grinders. What I wanted to show is there's two different worlds of top end grinders, grind on demand and single dose, and they both have their place. Single dose technically does a better job. There's no retention. You really are only grinding what you're gonna extract and drink there and then. With the grind on demand, they're just more friendly to use, easier. You've already dialed in the grind and the time effectively putting in the porta filter, grinding and making your coffee a lot easier. So as I say, you're trying to do multiple coffees in a row, you've just woken up and doing a coffee in the morning, kind of a no fuss approach. In saying that, for those that are worried with the retention, what I've done on my grinder at home is set up my single, which I never use, as a two second, basically as a perch, not as a single. And I run my, my double as a seven gram. So I've got a Eureka XL at home. So I've got single to purge and double. And in the morning, what I do, I put in my porta filter, purge out two seconds of coffee, knock it into the knocking tube, and then grind my normal coffee. So we are wasting two grams, but I'm effectively getting a really clean coffee, just like this, with a lot less work. At the warehouse here, we do use grinders that are single dose, because we want to get that best shot every time. So I guess it's a different approach and just different situations. Which do you prefer? I'm curious to know. Grind on the man or single dose? Leave your comment below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching this video on the top five home coffee grinders. Do you have any more questions? Do you have one of these grinders? Are you looking at getting one? Leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. And like always, if you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you.